AM860, KNUJ. Good morning and welcome to uh, Community Affairs. Joining us today, uh, former uh, New Ulm resident uh, Roger Dyer on the air. Uh, the Rocket, as I referred to him when we used to do our uh, sports show. Boy, uh, when was that, Roger? I know, you know, timing for me, everything seems like a few years ago, but was that, what, late 80s? Early 90s? Well, uh, well I, think, I think we got started with the Friday football forecast for, uh, I think, in 88 or 89. And okay. And had, had a run for about 10 years until you got too lazy and canceled the show. So, But it was fun. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't <laughs> talked to him in how long, and he gets a shot in there within the first 30 <laughs> seconds of the conversation. Good job. Good job. <laughs> but... And tell us, we want to talk about the book Scarlet Ice, uh, the story of Minnesota State High School hockey player John Janaveris and the team he loved. We'll get to that, but uh, just update us on uh, what you have been up to, first of all, Roger. Well, I left the, uh, the New Alma uh, area in 1995 and uh, uh, migrated back to um, uh, Green Bay where I, I, I grew up. I was born in the National Falls, but I grew up in Green Bay and um, uh, lived in the Green Bay area until uh, 2006, and uh, when I moved to Oshkosh, um, uh, I remarried in, in 2008 to uh, uh, a wonderful lady of Italian descent, to Michelina Manzi, and uh, so Michelina and I live in Oshkosh. Uh, she's a uh, professor of literacy at UW Oshkosh. I work for uh, the UW School of, Med uh, School of Medicine and Public Health. Uh, the short answer to what I do is I help doctors and dentists and their staffs help their patients quit smoking uh, or using chewing tobacco, whatever the case may be. So I've been doing this for about 10 years, and so it's a, it's a good job, and I, I think I'm helping people out. Well, obviously, you still like the writing. You used to do some writing, and uh, you put this book together. Now, you did sports writing for how long, too? Uh, yeah, I started uh, the, new, the old Norm Post Review, sure. the... Uh, Monday morning startup, the weekly paper that um, for uh, a very short while <laughs> tried to take on the journal. Uh, uh, I, I wrote for them for a couple years, and then I started with the Free Press, uh, I think uh, 1989, and I wrote for the Free Press for six years, and uh, I've always had kind of a feel for writing. I enjoyed it greatly, and, um, and covering hockey for the, for the Free Press is uh, how I got connected to uh, Scarlet Ice and uh, the, uh, the story of that 94-95 Mankato West hockey team. Okay, let's talk about the book, Scarlet Ice. And uh, wh what brought this about? Why did you decide this was something that you wanted to do? Well, uh, you know, my, my dad played uh, what I guess could be best described as semi-professional hockey for the Green Bay Bobcats mm -hmm. uh, 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 that started up in 1958 and 59. I, I think he made $50 a game. Uh, he had a he had a regular job, but it's something he did in the winter. And so I've been around hockey all my life. Uh, when I moved to New Orleans in 1976, uh, uh, I started coaching a year later. Uh, I, the New Orleans Pee Wees were my first first team I ever coached, the, the 77-78 team. So I got involved in uh, in, in New Orleans hockey and um, and in covering hockey over in Mankato. Uh, uh, the 94-95 Mankato West Scarlet hockey team was uh, was not a very good hockey team, uh, and, and I think most of the players on that club would admit to that. They uh, they were awfully young. Most of the most of the players were sophomores or freshmen. They had about four or five juniors who had some varsity experience. They had three seniors, uh, two captains, uh, fraternal twins, Joe and Jim Grabianowski and uh, Rick Mills, and they had a lot of struggles. Uh, and that's a nice way of saying that they lost a lot of hockey games. Um, and some games they were competitive, but uh, uh, the team that they faced, uh, the, t uh, the Norm team from that season, uh, which my oldest son played on, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of the kids on the Norm Eagles in the 94-95 team, I had coached as, uh, as young people coming through the Norm Hockey Association, so I, so I knew them all. And you know, in spite of my coaching, they turned out to be pretty good hockey players. <laughs> and uh, they were they were off, they were just loaded. I had Peyton mm -hmm. Larson, uh, sure. who, who uh, uh, family lives in Hanscom, he led the whole state in goal scoring that year, scored 46 goals. So Norm came over to uh, um, uh, Mankato, I believe it was January 27th or 28th of '95, and uh, uh, the Eagles won nine to two. And uh, uh, 
they, they could have scored 20 goals if they wanted to. The Larson kid, Dave Larson, scored five goals in 11 minutes in the second period. And Dave was just a, a, a very gifted, uh, very gifted in his own uh, in the opposition end. Just loved to score goals. Got got high off it. I guess is the best way to describe it. And was very good at it. Um, uh, following that defeat by New Orleans, now uh, the the Mankato West coach Mike Carroll uh, conceived of a four check, a four. A four, a four check uh, for you know non hockey listeners is is kind of like uh, playing defense in the other opponent's end. You're trying mm-hmm. to get the puck back, and it was a, it was a kind of a radical four check, and whereby he just had one player after the puck. He had his two wingers up high on the points, and he had his two defensemen uh, in, at the center of the ice near the red line. And it was kind of con- you know conceding the fact that we're not very good, and we'll try to get the puck back and try to clog up the center of the ice. So uh, they called the Eagle for a check, and uh, Carroll rolled this out for this New Orleans game. And, of course, the Mankato West players were totally clueless of what was going on, and, and they got routed. And two nights later, they went down to uh, Owatonna and tried to run this four check again and got, got handled 13-1 to by Owatonna. And now, again, talking about the hockey portion, but this was also a time in Mankato where there was the, the meningitis scare. Well, that, uh, 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 I'm getting to that now. Okay. This weekend, now, now uh, New Orleans beat uh, Mankato West on a Thursday night, nine to two, and on Saturday uh, uh, they get beat by Owatonna. While all this is going on, three Mankato West students are hospitalized with mm-hmm. meningitis, and the following Monday morning, another student goes down. So they immunize kids on. Uh, uh, I think it was the last day of January of '95. Uh, uh, the Mankato East and West uh, high school and, and middle school students get immunized. This is on a Tuesday, Thursday night. Uh, John Janaveras, a, 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 a little sparkler of a kid, the uh, smallest guy in the team, but just absolutely a worker, uh, fearless, uh, doesn't feel good. Uh, and by Friday morning, January, uh, February 3rd, his mother takes him into the hospital. Uh, I think he was admitted at 7.36 a.m., and uh, he was pronounced dead at 11.39. It was uh, meningococcemia. It's one of this, this meningitis bacteria just uh, uh, just took over his system, and uh, he, he tried hard, uh, but he had no chance. Uh, so... <clears throat> The whole community, the Mankato community, was just in a uh, was in an uproar. Everybody was scared. Uh, uh, the Mankato West season was suspended. Uh, a lot of their foes did not want to uh, play. Mm-hmm. You know, a team that uh, uh, where meningitis had you know taken the life of one of their players. So it was it was quite traumatic. And uh, after uh, after they they buried John. Uh, their season resumes a few days later, and they they, they finish off the rest of their season. Uh, uh, they lose all their games. I think to give you an idea, Brian, of how anemic the offense was on the Mankato West team, they, they uh, were shut out four times and held to one goal in seven of their games. Uh, over here in New Orleans, meanwhile, I mean the uh, the, uh, the Eagles were averaging about six or seven goals a game, and uh, uh, so you have this this great disparity in talent. Uh, great disparity in success uh, between the two clubs. So uh, the playoffs roll around, and the West finds itself uh, coming into New Orleans to face the top-seeded Eagles. Now, a little background is necessary on the New Orleans Eagle team. The year before, the Eagles had played in the Section uh, 1 final against Farmington, uh, and they uh, they got beat 4-2, to two, so they... Everybody on that Eagles team, including the coaching staff, Tom Marco and, and his two assistants, uh, they were they appeared to be going back to the state tournament. I think mean, that was that was the, the the focus of the club that year. I mean, uh, they had you know they had they had uh, three very good seniors. Scott Marco was a was a wonderful defenseman, could just powder the puck. One of the strongest shots I've ever seen a high school player uh, have. He played defense. And Dayton, I've already talked about. John McKenzie was just a, a very nice, fluid skater. Was kind of a setup man. Uh, John centered my son Ben and and Dayton. And they had two very two good goaltenders, two juniors, uh, uh, Josh Retka and Ty Rates. Uh, and they had a good supporting cast of uh, some kids that uh, scored more than five goals uh, during the season that that could put the puck in the net from time to time. 
So uh, Mankato West comes over to, uh, to Nuam. Uh, I don't know. Uh, Nuam was, a, you know, was a tremendous favorite. And uh, this is the playoff game now. Playoff game now. And Mike Carroll. Uh, this take took place place on February twenty third, nineteen ninety five. Mike Carroll uh, walks in the locker room before the game, gives a gives a long uh, speech about their season and, and, and challenges, and talks about John Janavaris and what kind of a guy he was. Uh, and says, you know, we're going to honor, you'll, you'll remember John for the rest of your life, but you have a one-shot opportunity to honor John Genevieve as the hockey player. Uh, 